Then Jesus said to his disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. For it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day he returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Then the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. So the Lord said to them, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. And which of you, having a servant, plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, Come at once and sit down to eat? But does he not rather say to him, Prepare something for my supper, and gird yourself and serve me, and afterwards, when I have eaten and drunk, then you may eat and drink? Does he thank that servant for doing those things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which were commanded, you say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Now, as Jesus was journeying towards Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then he entered a certain village, and there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And so when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and lifted up his voice, glorifying God. And he fell on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And when Jesus saw him, he said, Were they not ten who were cleansed? But where are the nine? Were they not any found except this foreigner to return and give glory to God? And he said to him, Rise, your faith, go your way. Your faith has made you well. Now, when the Pharisees asked him when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus said to them, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to the disciples, The days will come and you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. Many will say to you, Look here or look there. Do not go after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that flashes forth at one part under heaven and shines to the other part under heaven, so also will the Son of Man be in his day. But as it was in the days of Noah, so also shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. They ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them. Even so it shall be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house below, let him not go down to take them away. And the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. For he who seeks to save his life will lose it, and he who loses his life will preserve it. For I say to you, in that night two men will be in one bed. The one will be taken, and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together, and the one will be taken, and the other left. Two men will be in the field, and the one will be taken, and the other left. Then his disciples said to him, Where, Lord? And Jesus answered them, saying, Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Then he also spoke a parable to them, that men always have to pray and to not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge, who did not fear God, nor regard them. Now there was a widow in that same city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me, for my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect who cry out to him day and night, though he bears long with them? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself, saying, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give tithes of all that I possess. But the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven. But he beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you that this man went to his house justified rather than the other. For he who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then they also brought infants to him, that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him and said to the disciples, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a child will by no means enter into it. Now there was a certain ruler there who asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? For there is no one good but one, that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not bear false witness, do not steal, honor your father and your mother. And he said, All these things I have kept 
from my youth. And when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. And come, follow me. And when the man heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said, How hard it is for those with riches to enter into the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. And those who heard it said, Who then can be saved? And Jesus answered, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, See, we have left all and followed you. And Jesus answered, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has not left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who will not receive many more times in this present time and in the age to come eternal life. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all things which are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles, and will be insulted, and mocked, and spit upon. And they will scourge him, and kill him, and on the third day he will rise again. But they understood none of these things, for the saying was hidden from them, so that they did not know what was spoken. Now it happened, when he drew near to Jericho, that, behold, there was a certain blind man begging on the side of the road. And hearing the multitude passing by, he asked what these things meant. And it was told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. So he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who went before warned him that he should keep quiet. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he drew near, he asked him, saying, What do you want me to do for you? And he said to him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Jesus answered him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people when they saw it gave praise to God. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a man, uh, gone to be a guest with a man, who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone, by false accusation, I will restore fourfold. And Jesus answered him, saying, Today salvation has come to this house, because he is also a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And when they heard this, he began to speak another parable to them, because he was near Jerusalem, and because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Therefore he said, A certain nobleman journeyed to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom, and to return. So he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minas, and said to them, Do business until I come. But his citizens hated him, and they sent a delegation after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. And so it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded those ten servants, to whom he had given his money, that they should be called to him, so that he could find out how much every man had gained by trading. Then the first came, saying, Master, your mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, good servant. Because you were faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over ten cities. And then the second came, saying, Master, your mina has earned five minas. Likewise, he said to him, You also be over five cities. And another servant came, saying, Master, here is your mina, which I kept put away in a handkerchief, for I feared you. Because I knew you were an austere man, you collect what you did not deposit, and you reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, Out of your own mouth I will judge you, you wicked servant. For you knew I was an austere man, collecting what I did not deposit, and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not rather put my money in the bank? that at my coming I might have collected it with interest. And then he said to those who stood by, Take the mina from him, and give it to him who has ten minas. But they said to him, Master, he has ten minas. But I say to you, that to him who has you will be given, and from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. But bring here those enemies of mine, who did not want me to reign over them, and slay them before me. And when Jesus said, th said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mountain that is called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go to the village opposite of you, where, as you enter, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone should say to you, Why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to them, Because the Lord has need of it. And so those who were sent went on their way and found it just as he had said. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, Why are you loosing the colt? And they said, The Lord has need of him. So they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the colt and set Jesus on top. Now as he was going, many spread their clothes on the road. And when Jesus drew near to the descent to the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and to praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works which they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Then some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he answered them, saying, 
I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Then he drew near, and he saw the city, and he wept over it, saying, If you had known, even you, in this your day, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. But days shall come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side, and level you and your children within you to the ground. And they will not leave in you one stone upon another, because you did not know the time of your visitation. Then Jesus went into the temple, and he began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying, It is written, My house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And he was teaching daily in the temple. But the chief priests and the scribes, together with the leaders of the people, all sought to destroy him, but were unable to do anything, for all the people were very attentive to hear him. Now it happened on one of those days, as he taught in the temple, and preached, taught, taught the people in the temple, and preached the gospel to them, that the chief priests and the scribes, together with the elders, confronted him, and spoke to him, saying, who gave you this authority? Or by what authority are you doing these things? And he answered them, saying, I also will ask you one thing, and answer me. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? And they reasoned among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say from men, all the people will stone us, for they are persuaded that John was a prophet. So they answered that they did not know. Then Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Then he began to speak a parable to the people, saying, A certain man planted a vineyard, leased it to vine dressers, and went to a far country for a long time. Now at vintage time he sent a servant to the vine dressers that they might give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But they beat him and sent him away empty handed. So he sent another servant, and likewise they beat him also, treated him shamefully, and sent him away empty handed. And again he sent a third, and they wounded him, and cast him out of the vineyard. So the owner of the vineyard said, What shall I do? I will send my beloved son. Probably they will respect him when they see him. But when they saw him, they reasoned among themselves, saying, Look, it is the heir. Come, let us kill him, that the inheritance may be ours. So they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, what will the owner of that vineyard do? He will come and destroy those vine dressers and give the vineyard to others. And when they heard it, they said, Certainly not. But Jesus looked at them and said, Why then is this that is written? The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Whoever falls on the stone will be broken, but on whoever the stone falls, it will grind him to powder. Then the chief priests and the scribes that very hour sought to lay hands on him, but they feared the people, for they knew he had spoken this parable against them. So they watched him, and they sent spies who pretended to be righteous, that they might seize on his words in order to deliver him to the power and authority of the government. And they asked him, saying, Teacher, we know that you say and teach rightly, and that you do not show personal favoritism, but that you teach the way of God in truth. Is it lawful for us to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their craftiness, and he said to them, Why do you test me? Show me a denarius, whose image and insignia is upon it. And they answered him, saying, Caesar's. And Jesus said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. And they could not catch him in his words in the presence of the people. And they marveled at his answer, and kept silent. Now some of the Sadducees, who denied that there is a resurrection, came to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote to us that if a man's brother dies, and he has a wife, and he dies with no children, his brother is to take her as wife and to raise up offspring for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers, and the first took a wife for himself and died without children. Then the second took her as wife, and he also died childless. Then the third took her, and in like manner the seven also, and they all died having no children. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife will she be, since all seven had her as wife? And Jesus looked at them and answered, saying, The sons of this generation marry and are given in marriage. But those who are counted worthy to attain the age and the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage, nor do they die anymore, for they are equal with the angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. But Moses also showed in the burning bush passage that the dead are raised, when he called the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. For he is not the God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all live. And then some of the scribes answered him, saying, You have spoken well, teacher. But they dared not question him anymore. Then Jesus said, how do some say that the Christ is the son of David? David himself said in the book of Psalms, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, if David calls him Lord, how is he then also his son? Then in the hearing of all the people, Jesus said to the disciples, Beware the scribes who desire to go around in long robes, and they love the greetings in the marketplaces, and the best seats in the synagogues and at the feast, who devour widows' houses, and for pretense make long prayers. These will receive a greater condemnation.